Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, so sorry for the um, for coming in late. I just finished my uh, course, and then inshallah I'll share a bit more of this course that I've been going through this past uh, six days, most five days. Of course, the most last day of course. Um, it's like a preparatory course for the Inspector Hawla um, degree. And so inshallah I'll be going, I'll be entering the degree program. So inshallah, but I want I want to just um I also like to you know uh share like a lot of very interesting things mashallah that we um they've been learning you know so uh, mashallah you all are joining me joining me with this journey <laughs> as i'm studying i'm also sharing whatever i'm learning because of the urgency of it and um i'm also i'm also you know, if I, have, I have permission um to share right so inshallah inshallah as you go along you know we'll unpackage and, and understand our zaman inshallah but just to begin bismillahirrahmanirrahim um, probably so I just came home. <laughs> I just came home. Mm. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alam. Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashabi al-anbiya wa mursalin. Sayyidina wa habibina wa shufi'ina. Wa nuri qulubina wa qurdi'ina Muhammadin. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. اللهم لا علمنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم آتينا من لدنك رحمة وعلمنا من لدنك علمة سبحانك لا علمنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نوين تعلم وتعليم وتذكر وتذكر والنفع والانتفاع والفرا والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الهدى ودلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع لطف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك عالم لدني مشرق الصوفي الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم إنا نسألك عالم لدني ومشرق الصوفي الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم إنا نسألك عالم لدني وما شرب الصوف يا الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم صلي وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ألهمنا علما نثقه به أمرك ونواهيك ورزقنا فهم نعرف به كيف الناجيك يا رحم الراحم اللهم إن سألك فهم النبيين وحفظ المرسلين والهم الملائكة المقربين في عافية يا رحم الراحم اللهم أغبننا بالعلم وزينا بالحلم وأكرمنا بالتقوى وجملنا بالعافية يا رحم الراحم آمين صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم إنا نستودعك ما قرأناه وما نقرأه في هذا المجلس وما قبله وما بعده فاحفظه علينا حتى ترده إلينا وقت إحتياجنا إليه يا رحم الراحم اللهم أكرمنا بنور الفهم وأخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وافتح لنا أباب رحمتك وانشر علينا حكمتك يا رحم الراحم آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم يا من قاليد الأمور كلها بيده وإليه يرجع الأمر كله يا فتاح يا عالم يا فتاح يا عالم يا فتاح يا عالم افتح علينا فتحا طريبا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحلل أقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وسدد لساني وهد قلبي وفعل كذلك بأحبابي أبدا ورزقنا كمال فتوح العارفين والفقه في الدين مع كمال الإخلاص والصدق واليقين والعافية والغنى والنصر والحفظ والنفع والانتفاع وخيرة الدارين وعلوم الأولين والآخر آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد المأمون على العلم المضمون والفهم المكنون من سر الكاف والنون وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وارزقنا اللهم نصيبا وافرا من سر قولك إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكن اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد المأمون على العلم المضمون والفهم المكنون السر الكافي والنون وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ورزقنا اللهم نصيبا وافرا من سر قولك إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكن 
Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin al-Makmin ala al-alim al-makmun wa al-fahmi al-makmin min sirri al-tahafi wa'l-mun wa'ala alihi wa sahbihi wa salim wa rizukna Allahumma nasib al-wafira min sirri qawlika innama amruhu idha arwada shay'an ayyakul lahu kum fayakul Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin al-makmin ala al-alim al-makmun wa al-fahmi al-makmin min sirri al-tahafi wa'l-mun wa'ala alihi wa sahbihi wa salim wa rizukna اللهم نصيبا وافرا من سر قولك إنما أمره وإذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون اللهم صلي على سيدنا محمد المأمن على العلم المضمون والفهم المكمن من سر الكافي والنون وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وارزقنا اللهم نصيبا وافرا من سر قولك إنما أمره إذا أرواد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون اللهم صلي على سيدنا محمد المأمن على العلم المضمون والفهم المكمن من سر الكافي والنون وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وارزقنا اللهم نصيبا وافرا من سر قولك إنما أمره إذا أرواد شيئا أن يقول وله فيقول اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد المأمون على العلم المضمون والفهم المكنون من سر الكافي والنون وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وارزقنا اللهم نشيبا وافرا من سر قولك إنما أمره إذا أرواد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون في كل لحظة أبدا عدد فوقه ورضى نفسه وسنة عرشه ومداد كلماته Alhamdulillah, 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 for giving us a game together um, in studying this knowledge that is an essential, um, and you say, uh, a core knowledge in the, um, for, for, for us living in the end of times. And this knowledge connects us um, strongly, firmly to our Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam. And as I mentioned, I'm not going to rush through the book because the entire, the entire you know, purpose of this knowledge, you know, as you take bit by bit of this knowledge, you are to implement this knowledge immediately. Because of the immediacy and the urgency of the matter, uh, the knowledge needs to be implant, uh, implemented immediately. You know, so whatever you hear, you know, in these classes, you know, the sharings, right, that you say the, the, the eye openings, right, the eye openings, and the bosira, I mean, you're opening your eyes, right, to the reality. Was what's going on around us, and you, right now, right now, here and now, you're going to make your, you're going to make changes. You're going to, to you know, you're going to change. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to um, change your mindset, change your mentality, change your lifestyle, change your family, right? change your choices. You know, you, you alter so many things right here and now. Right, this knowledge is not it's not a matter of you know take all the five books, you know take all you know what is what is um, you know written by Habib Abu Al Alini. May Allah have mercy on his soul. And in fact, he has written a lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot. He has written a lot, subhanallah. Um, 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 and to take all that he has, he has written and then wanted to apply after that, it's too late. But right? you're going to apply right now, right here and now. You know, of all that you are, here in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give us openings. And mashallah, this lawat that Habib Abu Qadr Adani has written for us to open our heart. You know, to open our hearts, you know, to this, to this, to this knowledge. It is a very beautiful slawat to the point that like, I personally am I'm tasting so much English from this slawat that you want to do more than seven, <laughs> you know, mashallah. You need to do more throughout your day. You know, memorize that slawat that the Habib Abu Qal Adani has given us, you know, and just keep doing that, keep doing that. You know, you know, for all we know, there's so much himaya, so much uh, protection in that slawat. It should, it should be memorized. You know, it should be memorized, you know, um, you know, by us, inshallah, um, those who are serious in taking this knowledge, in seizing this knowledge, you know, and in applying it in our lives. Right? So, mashallah, so understand one thing very clear. This knowledge, it is applied the moment it's taken, right? As if all knowledge is actually, you know, mashallah, no knowledge is not applied the moment, the moment you, you take it. You know, all knowledge is the moment you take it, you apply it, right, to the best of your ability. And this is even more urgent, right, because in the in the failure to apply this knowledge, right, comes in the evil and the, um, and the destruction and the corruption of the zaman. Right, that is that is you say that is that um uh that is the, the severity or the you know the seriousness you know of this um, of this knowledge. Right, so I hope that is um inshallah that is clear right for the people who are attending this lessons, inshallah. And may this, may this be spread, inshallah. So I was just um commenting early on when I wow. first came in, um uh that uh, you know I have been attending this um six-day course. So inshallah, I'll be um, enrolling in the university here about you know that the, the, the degrees on in the fiqh tahawulat 
um, uh, which 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 I feel that is is you know in looking at syllabus and the modules that they go that they, that they go through, it's so important you know that the things that there is being taught that they, they're gonna they're gonna focus us on you know as we study this knowledge right um. I just to share that this six six days that have been on course um before the the opening of the semester, which is next week. You know, this makes the while for me. That inshallah, I can keep up all these classes. And I'm like, subhanallah, like half the time I'm thinking to drop classes, stop classes, to continue to. Uh, I miss so much, Allah. This makes the that Allah gives me the ability to know how to um arrange my time right properly, right? But I mean, um. The six the six days, right? Um, we've been going to a course that is called um the the kawaid, like kawaid will be the principles, right? The principles, uh, uh what the spirit, right? And the the implementation, right? Or the any in, in, the, the implementation of the tahawulat, right? It's been a six day course. Um, and mashallah, you know, the, the mashayikh, and it's the um, the mashayikh, right? the men, right, who are teaching us in you know, um, these courses. So mashallah, you know, you live, I, for me, it's only point a commentary here. With regards to Tarim and Hadramot, and Tarim specifically, I would say, right, that I, I love how how separate male and female are. <laughs> They're so separate, men and women, you know, in Hadramot. You will not find any school where there is a there is a mix. And and even if let's say they don't have a teachers in the in the side of the females to teach certain subjects, they'll bring the men in and the men sit in a completely separate room. And right? now they use technology, you know, to bring any to, to have like a a screen in the side of the woman's side, you know, um, uh, and mic, right? So there's a mic that that goes through, right? So so that so as a teacher teaches us, and he's teaching only the woman. He does not see any one of us at all. You know, we are in a different room altogether. Right? We have a screen in front of us and a mic that's placed in that room. So any questions, we just speak into the mic, and the sheikh hears our questions. And he, and and as the sheikh speaks, you know, some of the mashayikh they choose not to not have themselves on the video. And that is really from their modesty, from their higher. And I'm just so amazed by, 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 by how Tareem, you know, they're so advanced in their education. They are very advanced in their education. Right? At the same time, they preserve um, the, you know, I, I, I love it. I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> like they preserve the separation between men and women. Right? It's, it's very strong here, you know, in Tareem. They, they preserve the separation between um, men and women. Like the chef would not even know you're one of his students. He wouldn't even know. You know, um, because it's such a strong separation between men and women, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, so we see his slides. We we'll, we we'll listen to his slides, and like we see his slides. We we listen to his voice. Um, explain to them so as the knowledge is being delivered. Right? The knowledge is being delivered, right? And then we're we're listening, and if we have questions, we speak into the mic, and our questions are being, you know, um, um, sent to him. You know, mashallah. You know, um, even in Darzahar, they have a room called the Sheikh's room. There's a there's a roof at the sheikh, you know, the sheikh's room, right? whereby I'm just gonna share a, a bit of things in here in, in Tarim. You know, mashallah, I know into our class, inshallah, but just in, in Darul Zahra, there's, there's a sheikh's room. It's on the third floor in Darul Zahra, but to assess the room is from outside Darul Zahra, right? So the door to the room, to a staircase that brings you up to the room, you know, in fact, the stairs is on the outside of Darul Zahra, in fact, right? The sheikh actually climbs the stairs. To the third floor, and he enters the room, and the, basically the room is like a, like a, like a dead end in a sense, whereby it does you, he does not walk through the Ruzahara at all. Right from the outside of the Ruzahara, he climbs the staircase to enter a small door into a small room where he sits. He puts on the camera, right, and we in the classroom next to his small room, right, we watch him on a on a on a screen, <laughs> right. So I've been learning my nahu in that way because some nahu um the the, the you know, teach us, right? Because the teachers in the Rosara are trained um, for these higher books, right? So for higher books, you will find that the Shaykh, the Shaykh, they will come in and they will teach. So, mashallah, I'm really going to comment on that very, very, you know, beautiful thing. I love here about that, in, that people who say you have to interact, you have to see each other, each other, you have to be, you know, the men and women must, must, you know, um, uh, mingle and must interact and they must, any, we are living in, I'm, I'm living in a world right now whereby they're fully functioning, and very high level education and very high quality of education without any form of interaction, you know, um, uh, between male and female, except the delivering of knowledge and, um, you know, expressing questions. You know, and even when you ask questions, you don't even sit to the shade who we are. <laughs> we just ask questions and we just, we just pull the mic and we ask the question and it answers our questions, you know, subhanAllah. 
Right, so it's really you know you know it's so much fitna that is removed. You can't even you can't even imagine anything going wrong. You know in this set setup because it's so pure, mashallah, in the way it is. I I, mean, I I love it. So I I love the way they do it because I, I went through NUS and I went through university in Singapore. And you know you know in polytechnics and universities in 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 all kinds of schools, right? And you can even look online if you want to. Of how much you know fitna has happened between between teachers and students, you know, um, and worldwide, you know, and a lot of a lot of you know, um, really terrible things have happened right between teachers and students, you know, Subhanallah, uh, because of the close interactions, right, that has caused for people to even cheat on their uh, on their spouses and so on. And we love Islam. We love Islam. <laughs> yeah, we let's love how Islam and it preserves everything about human experience. About human life, about about the individual, society, community, you know, at large, family, everything is preserved I, by laws of Islam. And therefore, this morning, Hababa Aishun was mentioning about the al bin Islam, right? To find honor and dignity and to be proud, you know, that this is our religion, this is our Sharia, right? It is something that is that, that the world needs, right? And to feel that way strongly, you know, as believers, you know, so because it is true, it is true. Right. And, and, and us failing to see that is just our failure to, 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 to understand our own religion. You know, subhanAllah. So anyway, coming to the book. Right. So the last lesson, um, we were speaking about the, the cover page, you know, of the book. Right. And, um, and I spoke a bit about, uh, um, and I've, I've been speaking about the Muqaddimah. Right, um, the introduction to the book, right, coming into the book. Right. And, and I spoke about, um, right, the word. Fiqh, I mean to understand, and tahawulat, we need to understand um, changes. I right? to understand changes. I right? so we were speaking about this, inshallah, alhamdulillah. Right? And just something I want to share from my, you know, from the course that I went through, right? Um, just to show, you know, that the importance of this um, knowledge and the confusion right? um, that can happen you know, towards the end of time, as we can see around us, but to take the examples from those of the past. Right, so a very clear, and I, I love this example that they gave. A very clear, any yani example they gave um, with the time of Sahaba, because if you tahawulat, you don't tahawulat, you actually learn different time periods. So you learn, you know, you, you learn texts that speak about the time period before the coming of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, so from Nabi Adam alaihi salam all the way. Right to the birth of the Prophet in fact, in fact, it is to the um, to his rising, you know, to, to to him, you know, rising to be a prophet. So from the birth of Adam to um, the very revelation, the first revelation on the Rasul and then you have the second, the second fatra or the second time period which is the life of the Prophet Sallallahu in which you put out every principle, every direction, every form of guidance is from the very precious 23 years in which he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, walked the face of this earth and graced our earth right, with, his, with his blessed feet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with his blessed lights, with his blessed aura, with his blessed face, with his blessed smiles, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with his blessed fragrance, with his blessed with everything about him that is blessed. Right, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the very precious 23 years in which he walked the face of this earth, um, um, I'm calling people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right? it's from these 23 years are precious and right? it's 23 years that we learn everything we need to know about you know about evil and about good and every form of guidance comes from these 23 years in which he sort of walks on the face of this and has walked on the face of this earth by right? golden years mashallah and, and in fact golden years is an understatement right? it, is, it, is, it is beyond 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 and he, um um, anything that we can ever, ever understand, um, those precious years that he was on his earth, and while he was so, then the last time period that there is a study in Fiqh Tahawlat, like comes from the death of the Prophet, alayhi wa sallam, all the way right till the end of time. Whereby in a hadith, Rasulullah said, Whoever, um, su whoever survives, right, whoever survives three you know calamities, right, three calamities to hit my ummah, then indeed they have survived. And the first one is his death, right? Because because and if you go to the history of, of, of Islam, you will see this how many of the people actually left Islam after the death of Rasulullah. 
and he said, and then the next next one is the um the assassination of a righteous leader, and that is identified to be said now man, right? When he was assassinated, he was killed. Um uh and, and inshallah, as you go to the we will we'll, we'll understand these things um um thoroughly, inshallah, because in understanding these things, like, it helps us to understand what is to come up, right? Right, it's, it's it's all important. It's all important, and nothing nothing that is that is being shared here is redundant or unimportant or just you know FYI kind of thing. Like you know everything that is going to be shared is to open up our eyes, open up our hearts, right? Um um, and open up our understanding right as to what we are about to take. Right? So I really hope you all have, you all have put down your intentions and make them abundant and keep increasing them every single week. Inshallah, it will be beneficial, right? And also, um, as I mentioned earlier on, I wanted to actually do short videos to address specific things in our zaman. But I need to just, just I need to just organize myself and just organize my time. Um, but, but, mashallah, I wanted to mention that that one of the things that you know to, to highlight as an example of the Hawlat, right, is um that that we were going through during this daura, just this past six days, um, is that. You know, and this is really to just to show you know the importance of this knowledge, right? So what happened, you know, in the Battle of the Camel, right? So basically, and this thing, thing about Fikta Hawlat as well, you have to be well read, right, and widely read. So inshallah, as I as I go through the material, I will give yani um, I will give background information, right, um, under the assumption that m- most people don't actually go through thoroughly um, the history of Islam. Right, because from here we understand very well, right, the stances of the righteous and those who actually understood the whole throughout history, and when we when we observe them, when we when we, we study their lives, we see how many you know of these righteous people, of the imams, of the ulama, of the scholars of our you know of the past, how they understood this knowledge and they applied it, you know, in in with the fitna of their time. Like and they survived and they were successful, you know, and they did not fall into the fitna, right? Nor were they deluded by the fitna, right? This is how we're going to understand this. So we're going to see how they applied it, right? Because fitna how it has been applied from the beginning, and right? from the beginning, it's not a new knowledge. It's just that not many people actually understood it, right? and not many people actually encompassed it. So in the past, it used to be just a few righteous, you know, and highly educated people. In the religion who understood this, and then those people who trusted them followed them, just copied them, right? But we're in a time whereby, you know, as what Habib Bukhari has done, it is by the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this knowledge that people, everybody needs to be trained on this knowledge. Everyone needs to be trained, you know, um, 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 to, to hold on to this, um, to understand this knowledge and to hold on to this knowledge. And inshallah, we're going to speak more with uh, regards uh, um, to the ruling of this knowledge and, and how much, you know, exactly people must know. I about this um to save themselves uh, in the end of times. Alhamdulillah. Right, so the example I want to give was the example of the battle of the camel, uh, which happened between Sayyidina Ali and Sayyidina Aisha. Right. So um and it was it won't say exactly, you know, um against them against each other, they were not against each other, right? But it just happened between the two groups that they were um that they were leading. Any right, so 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 in this battle of the camel, right? Um, you have Sahaba on both sides, you know, of the clash, right? And the clash was was done by the hypocrites. So this clash happened after the assassination of Sayyidina Uthman, right? And with the assassination of Sayyidina Uthman, right, there was a dispute between the in or a disagreement between the companions right, as to whether or not it is time to avenge. Um, or whether it is appropriate to avenge right the um the assassinations in Uthman, right, and to hold the you know the, the murderers, the culprits to account, you know, or to try and stable the Muslim Ummah you know, in this very fiery situation or very, you would say, very volatile situation. So the Sahaba deferred right, because you won't say either way is wrong, right? You say yes. You have to avenge. You know, someone was just killed, and Uthman was just killed. Right? There has to be, you know, some form of consequence on the murderers. To say now, man, there has to be consequence. Like they have, they have to be caught. They have to be punished. They have to be, you know, there has to be, you know, um, um, like they have, they have, they have to be executed. And like the murderers and so on and so forth. Like, and this, the Sharia of Islam, that like it does call, let's call for that in, in the sense that if someone is murdered, right, it's either a, a you know, execution. Of that many, right, to be 
um, given to the family of the of the murdered. And it's the law of Islam, the Sharia of Islam. And, but at the same time, and at the same time, you know, to actually take things with wisdom and to understand that sometimes in applying the Sharia just outright like that, that you will cause more problems because of the of the society having so much fitna, so much trust and tribulations in society that it actually will cause it to blow in your faces. And Sayyidina Ali saw that. Sayyidina Ali saw that, you know, in trying to pursue right, the murderers or the assassinators of, you know, or the, 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 the murderers of Sayyidina Uthman, but it will just cause for more bloodshed. Right? It will cause for more bloodshed. And they give many examples of, 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 the, of, of people of the past who saw this, right? like Sayyidina Al-Hassan, who had the most right, right to be a Khalifa, but he stepped down from his position because he saw that to insist on what is his right, and it is his right. It is his right that he is, he is the best of, of them in his zaman. It was his right to be the Khalifa. But he saw to step down from it uh, would, to, would be to prevent more bloodshed. And that is better. Right? So basically, it's a way of, of many things. You know, of what is rightful in the Sharia. And you can call for these rights if you want to. Right? But to forgive or to let go or to take another path. Uh, is it brings people away from fitna. It brings people away from bloodshed, right? So it's something that's very important for us to understand as we move towards the end of time, you know, with regards to this, you know, to, to, to be able to have a, like a why, like you know, a very deep understanding, you know, of balance, you know, um, um, in the application. Of course, you always apply the sharia. You don't forget the sharia, right? But there are times in which, right, to put it on hold, I ought to forego, I because even for assassination, I for execution, I for blood money, I a person can forego it. I to forego, you know, someone's rights, as you see the Prophet some do many times, many many times. he will just forego, you know, um, you know, his own rights. I is actually closer towards righteousness and towards, you know, um, um, safety, you know, of for the people. So anyway, just to um, explain this part, that you find in the battle of the camel that on both um, divisions there were Sahaba, right? There were companions and big companions. You won't say you won't say just you know like only on one side there were big companions. On both sides there were big companions. I said Ali was on one side. I said Ammar was on the one was on the side of Sayyidina Ali, right? and on the other side we have said Aisha, who's the mother of the believers. Right? She is you know she 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 has, has so much knowledge right, that is with her. Sayyidina Ali is a door. Rasulullah is the, the city of knowledge. Sayyidina Ali is a door. All the words of Rasulullah say that Aisha, she, and, and Rasulullah has said many, many, many hadiths that attest right, to her acquisition of knowledge. I have said that Talha Sayyidina Zubair on her side, and they are the Ashram Bashim the Jannah, they are the 10 who, who were given the good news of paradise. So on both sides, you have big Sahaba, you know, people who are righteous, right? people who only want the best for the Ummah. People who are sincere, but they're on two separate sides, right? So you imagine if you were there in that situation, who would you follow? You'd be confused, right? Like you'd be very confused. You'd be like, but Sayyidina Aisha is on this side, and Sayyidina Ali is on that side. Who do you follow? You know, you'd be so confused. Who do you follow, right? And this is where the words of the Prophet وسلم, comes in. Like his words come in. Right, because he gives us clarity as to where he's right and where he's wrong. Right, from their zaman, from, 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 the, from the point of his death, until right, the end of time, every single point whereby there will be confusion right, in, in, a world, uh, in, in the world, right, he will give us clarity. Wasalam, and that is why he's here for us. Right, he's here for us to show us, to, to give us clarity. Right, and before he passed away, Wasalam, he informed the Sahaba. He informed Sayyidina Zubair. Uh, and we mentioned this before, it was once he was seated with Sayyidina Zubair, you know, um, and Sayyidina Ali was there. And Sayyidina Zubair, he is the nephew of Sayyidina Khadija. And then, mashallah, um, this month, the month of Safar, Safar is the, is the month in which Sayyidina Khadija married Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And here in, in Dawan, in, 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 uh, in Dawan, in a valley um, near Tarim, I have a huge any hadra of Sayyidina Khadija, you know, um, in Dawan every on the 11th of uh, Safar. 
Ini masya Allah, um, masya Allah. One, insya Allah, I intend one day to go and attend. I've never attended that 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 hadra. <laughs> I that they that they always do in Dawan. Um, where lah, you know, this the, the the town there in Dawan. Right. So, um, but but masya Allah, you know, Safar is the month whereby Sayyidah Khadijah was Sayyidah Khadijah married Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So anyway, um, Susana Zubair is the nephew of Sayyidah Khadijah. And therefore, he spent a lot of time in the, in the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi he was Salam. And then he grew up in the house of Rasulullah sallam, who was very close in age to Sayyidina Ali. Right? And so they grew up as brothers. Right? They grew up as brothers, um, you know, in the house of Sayyida, uh, of Sayyida Khadija with Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, right? so, you know, there was once Rasulullah was sitting with Sayyidina Zubair, Sayyidina Ali, and he turned to Sayyidina Zubair and he says, Oh Zubair, do you love Ali? And Sayyidina Zubair said, of course, I love him like a brother. We grew up together, right? And, and the Rasulullah said, yeah, Zubair, there will come a day where you will fight Ali and you are transgressing, right? There will come a day where you will fight Ali and you are transgressing. And Sayyidina Zubair, and he, you know, he heard it, he heard it, right? But then he forgot it, right? So when the battle finally happened, right? When the battle finally happened, Right, um, Sayyidina Ali, you know, he met Sayyidina Zubair face to face and they were on opposite sides. And Sayyidina Ali said, Sayyidina Zubair, oh Zubair, right, do you remember the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He said one day that you will fight me and you are transgressing. And, and, and it dawned upon Sayyidina Zubair that he was in the wrong. By what? By the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'm giving an example of how the Sahaba understood this, right? Um, and Sayyidina Zubair, the moment the words came to him, he walked. He 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 dropped his sword and he walked out of the um out of the maraka, out of the the battlefield. He walked out, right? Um um and and one of the one of the the, the, the hypocrites, right? From the time of, of from from the from the from the side of Sayyidina Ali, because on both sides there were hypocrites, there were corruptors, there were mischief makers. There were the enemy was on both sides, and he, so and they were the ones who caused the fire of war to happen between. Um, sahaba, but Sahaba never hit Sahaba. And he so, so one of the people on the side of Sayyidina Ali ran after Sayyidina Zubair and cut off his head, right? And brought his head back to Sayyidina Ali. He said, good news, I killed Zubair. And Sayyidina Ali said, and I give you the news of hellfire. For I heard the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, whoever kills Zubair is in the fire. And these people, they are such hypocrites, they don't care. They don't actually care hearing these words against them. They rejoice. Right. Um, and also, you know, um uh uh once, you know, he was with his wives, you know, he was, was with his wives, and he said, you know, which of you, and this is all his his directions, his directives, he said, which of you right will be traveling with a group of people, right, to transgress, right, and they be barked against by um, the dogs of Ha'ab, as a place called Ha'ab, right, they were bucked against uh, the dogs of Ha'ab. You know, he just said it amongst his wives. You know, and and he said, and 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 then the hadith goes, and she and and she, this, you know, this which of you will, will travel with a group of people, right, to, in, in, a, in a transgression, right, and they were bucked against the dogs of Ha'ab, right, and people will be killing each other left and right of her, right, you know, around her they be killing each other left and right of her. You know, and, and the, the the wives were were you know were shocked by this by this news. Any one of us, I right, will be doing this. And then the Rasul some things in Aisha and said, perhaps you or Humaira. Right? So he said, perhaps you or Humaira, right? or or he told it what, perhaps you, which means it was her. I and in fact was in Aisha. She heard the she heard the hadith. She heard it loud and clear. She heard it right. Um. So you know, um. Later on. After the, the killing of Sayyidina Uthman, people manipulated her and they convinced her right, to go up right, um, you know, uh, and travel with them right, to try and sort things out. You know, the people who are trying to you know, avenge the death of Sayyidina Uthman. And she followed these manipulators. And this entire, the, the, how scary you know, I need the, the, this, 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 this manipulation, manipulation can be. Manipulation, even the Sahaba were subject to yeah. Like manipulation. So they brought her, they manipulated her, so said Aisha, right? And then she followed them, not knowing what she was getting into, right? But the indication of the prof was loud and clear, right? So as they went through the place called Hawab, right? She began to hear very unnatural barking of dogs, 
right? Dogs were barking and barking and barking and barking in a very unnatural way. And it's, you know, people were just, that they could, they could even, it wasn't normal the, the way the dogs were barking, right? So she was like, where are we? Because she remembered the hadith. She said, where are we? Where are we? Are these the barking of dogs? Where are we? And they said, it's how up. And she said, how up? Go back, go back. And she said, go back, go back. You know, we're not, do not go ahead. Do not go ahead. Go back, go back. You know, and then there's, there's like, why, oh, mother of the believers, and these are all, these are all the hypocrites. They are, they are manipulators. They are, they are people of fitna. This is all for us to learn, for us to learn what's going to happen to us at the end of times. I'm going to share something I learned today during the daura, right? So it, um, she said, she said, you know, go back, go back, right? And and then, and they, they said, so why? And she said, because the prophet told me, you know, that I will be hearing the dogs of how up. And when, if I were to, pers- to, to go ahead, right, there will be bloodshed and killing all around me, left and right. right. So I don't want to do that. I want to go back. And he told me that it's transgression. I want to go back. Right. Then, you know what the Munafikon did? You know what the hypocrites did? They got not one, not two, not three, not four. They got almost 40 to 100. You know, there's a, there's a, I forgot the number, but they got about 40 people to swear by the name of Allah to testify in front of Sayyidah Aisha, they are not at Hawab. And they said a different name. They said, We're not at Hawab, we're at somewhere else. So they, they got 40 people, all liars. They're all liars. Right? And they swore, Muslims, huh? Muslims. And munafiqun, they, they, are, they are hypocrites. They swore by the name of Allah to say that Aisha that they are not at her. They are not. Right? So she believed them. You know, she believed them that they, they, they are telling the truth. And she went on. Right? Uh, because they swore by Allah's name, to an oath by Allah's name, that they are not at her. Because why? They wanted to pursue the fitna. They wanted to have this clash. If we're within the Sahaba, they wanted to have this confusion so that those who were guilty of Kriza and Uthman can run off scot free. Right? They were trying to do that. Right? So they were manipulating Sayyidina Aisha in that way. It's so vicious. It's so vicious what, what happened in the history of Islam. And this is continuous. Eh? Don't think that you know what happened in the time of the Sahaba, happened to the Sahaba. No, these are all in the Mudish in Arabic. You see, these are all examples, right? And these are all templates that will recur. It will recur. There'll be people who will swear to you by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they an oath by you by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the jal is Nabi Isa. They will take an oath. Right? And, 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 and there'll be like people whom you trust. You'll be like, are you sure? You know, are you, and you'll be so confused. And there'll be not just one, two or three of them. There'll be like hundreds and thousands of them right, doing it. And will you be able to hear yeah, um, the words of the Prophet at that point in time like, and run away? And say, now Ali... You know, there um, were so many hadiths about this matter. And some people say, Ali, Ali, you know, there will be a matter between you and Aisha. Uh, he said, Sayyidina Ali, Ali, there will be a matter and an issue that will be between you and Aisha caused by the hypocrites. They will cause it. So ensure she's safe. Just ensure she's safe. Right? So Sayyidina Ali, you know, in this clash, Sayyidina Aisha, that like he would go and search for Sayyidina Aisha. So Sayyidina Ali understood. So Sayyidina Ali understood fiqh tahawla. He understood. He memorized all the hadith. He was applying the hadith. Right? And that is why he did not avenge the devil Sayyidina Uthman immediately because he understood the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he understood that avenging the death of Sayyidina Uthman is, is the most, it, it is the most destructive thing to do at that point in time. So he refrained from doing that. I right? Sayyidina Ali. And he knew behind him, in behind his back, using the shield, are the murderers of Sayyidina Uthman. They are using him, Sayyidina Ali. He knew he was very well of it. Now, mashallah. So anyway, you know, so all, all you know, um, examples like, of the importance of it. When Sayyidina Ali, during the, during the battle, he would go and search for Sayyidina Aisha and the camel that she was on. And he would keep going. He would keep going to Sayyidina Aisha and say, are you okay, O mother of the believers? Are you okay, O mother? Are you, are you, are you, are you, you know, are you hurt? Do you need anything? She would keep checking on her. Uh, while someone might say they are the enemies, uh, they are fighting each other. They are not fighting each other. They are being manipulated uh, by the um by by the by the by the hypocrites. You know, and this will continue till the end of time. It will continue till the end of time. True believers, and you say we are not any truer or any more, you know, educated or any our iman is not stronger than the Sahaba. And the Sahaba have the highest iman, the highest education. And he said, like you say, Sayyidina Aisha, not someone, you know, not knowledgeable. She is knowledgeable. But yet she was manipulated by the people around her. 
And thereafter, she stayed away from it. She just, she never, ever, ever got involved with anything except teaching thereafter. So in Aisha, she heard the hadith, stay at home. I right, stay at home. Right. Um, um, there's a hadith was some saying that towards the end of time, when the fitna becomes so widespread, so rampant, be a rock. There's a hadith that says, be a rock. Right, meaning, don't respond. Don't respond right, to the fitna that's going around. Stay away from it. Be a rock. Block yourself. Right, block yourself. Don't try, and, don't try and get your hands in there. Right, because it's going to sweep you up. Right, um, and, and pull you down the currents, you know, of that of of that fitna. So now Aisha saw that, you know, she saw how she was so terribly manipulated that pushed her into fighting against the heart. She wasn't fighting anybody, but she was in the in the in that in that situation. And in, Subhanallah. Thereafter, she just sat in her house and she refused to move back to go anywhere, except for Hajj and Umrah. You know, Subhanallah, she refused. Right? She refused to go anywhere, except for Hajj and Umrah. Said so Aisha, you know, she understood the hadith. Don't get involved because you will be manipulated. And don't try and get involved in this, in this world of, 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 of fitna. You know, subhanAllah. And then there's another hadith that the Rasulullah said that right, was the end of time. Strike your strike um the strike your swords on stones. Right? Meaning that break the swords, right? Break the swords. Do not use um do not use military equipment, do not use weapons towards the end of time. You just don't know who you're fighting. Right? So, so this is all the hadith of Rasulullah that points us to just, you know what, you know, don't, don't go that way. You know, and there are many examples that I was going to doing with my course. You know, mashallah, um, but for us to open up our, 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 our idea, mashallah. So we are, um, naam, right? so we are uh, at the, we, we've gone through, let me think, right? we've gone through um the Quranic uh the Quranic um setting point, right? The Matla Qurani, right? And um uh, and oh yeah, you didn't go through it properly. <laughs> I mean you didn't go through it fully, they're still there, but still in the Matla Qurani, right? So the first bit that we took from the Matla Qurani is with Hal, Fahayam Buruna, right? So um um which means that and, and are they waiting? Are they waiting? I do they await illa sa. I accept that the hour I come to them. I said the hour can come to them. Fakarja and that the ahum bagda. I that it will come to them all of a sudden. Uh, you will not realize this. The hour will come all of a sudden. Right? So from from now onwards, from today onwards, right? Um, prepare yourselves. I right? prepare yourselves, and you need to remove all the injections. You know of the of the jalic toxins from around you. From now, we need to not just stop it. We need to start to cleanse, right? Because we're so intoxicated, so polluted right, by this dunya that we are in, you know, by this world that we are in. This, this, is, especially the media, right? I mean, it's basically the media. Right? The media is the biggest tool or the biggest weapon. I want to call it tool, call it weapon. Right? It is the biggest weapon of the jalic. Right, the media is not going to spread worldwide. You know, now they have, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a double-edged sword, any, right, whereby they have satellites that can bring internet right, to the most remote places on this earth. This is all the jelly, you'd say. Right, but because of that, I have, I have now, I can have strong internet here in Tarim. Right, so inshallah, it's all good because it's a, it's a double-edged sword. And it's a, it's a, you can use it for good, you can use it for evil. But now, you know, I think Elon Musk, he has, he has filled up the sky and with, 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 with um, satellites. So wherever Allah said Muhammad get along. Right, as remote as you, um, as remote as you are, right, uh, wherever you hide this world, that right, you can connect to the internet. You can actually connect to the internet, which is scary. Right? At the same time, you know, we use it for good, as what Habib Abba Ali will say, right? Don't deny yourself of the wasail of the zaman. Don't deny yourself of the any of the tools of the zaman. These are the tools of zaman. Right now, I'm in Tarim. I'm studying this knowledge. And I'm trying my best to, to reach you, you know, um, wherever you are in the world. You know, subhanAllah. Um, you know, for us to uh, any, understand this, right? right? So, you know, mashallah. Right? So, so, um, that, that this, the, the, the hour will come all of a sudden. The influence of the jal will spread and has spread, you will say. Um, 
to every corner of this earth. But at the same time, we have the words of our Prophet uh, whereby he told Sayyidina Fatima Al-Zahra, Ya Fatima, for surely the religion of your father will enter into every home. So as evil was spread far and wide all over the earth, like goodness was spread far and wide all over the earth. So this knowledge is not any, in Arabic, this knowledge is not like for you to kind of like, you know, oh, bad omen, bad omen, oh, any uh, bad luck, oh, any, all this bad stuff talking about, oh, in la, 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 la. This knowledge is, is protection, right? It is defense, right? It is also um, to rejoice, right? to rejoice that, that, that the, the, the deen of the Prophet وسلم, was spread far and wide into every home he will spread. وسلم, and you don't know where the army of, you know, of goodness will come from and where they sit. And you don't know where the army of evil will come from and where they sit. Subhanallah. Right. So the alamat, right, the signs of the end of time. And so how will it be for them? Right, when the when the signs appear in front of them, that they will remember that they will remember and they will recall the words of their prophet. And the words of our Prophet. We saw in the examples that I gave earlier on about the Sahaba when it actually happened. And when it actually happened, you know, like some of them, like Zubair, he forgot. He forgot about the words of Rasulullah until Sayyidina Ali reminded him. You know, um, uh, it was also said that, that um, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned that there will be a clash between his Sahaba, right? And the the and the, and the, 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 the group that is on, on righteousness or the group that is correct is the one in which Sayyidina Ammar, Bin Yasir is in and he will die from his flesh right? or he will be killed in his flesh. And true enough, Sayyidina Ammar bin Yasir, he was in the side of um, Sayyidina Ali. And he was in the side of Sayyidina Ali um, in that flesh. Right? So, subhanAllah, it's all Sid. It's, you, and you'll be thinking, if it's all Sid, uh, why are there still people who are doing this? You know, it's all Sid. Right? Why are there people who are still doing this? You know, it's just that the dunya. And the dunya has overcome people. They are not listening to the Prophet وسلم, anymore. And, and you can take this example right here, right now in our Zaman. How many Muslims? You say to them over and over and over again, against Disney, against music, against Hollywood, against Bollywood, against, against films, against comedy, against sitcoms, against um, um, computer games, against um, um, phone games, apps, whatever. You know, against drama series, against Korean, Korean or Japanese stuff, right? against all these things. You can see to all of them against, against, against all these things. Like, you know, who's speaking against these things? The Prophet. Nobody else. It's him. It's him. It's just him. Telling us, it's just telling us against all these things. How many Muslims still defend it? How many Muslims still do it? They know, they know their Prophet hates it. They know it. The prophet hates it, and they still do it. They're still in it. Why? Nafs, full stop. Nafs, dunya, any whatever it is that they, 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 they can't. They're addicted. They're addicted. I'm looking to your phone right now. If you still have games in there, like like la 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 If you have really, I don't even know why adults have games in their phones. <laughs> Just still wondering why. And it, why do adults have games in their phones? Why? Your adults, any subhanallah, from the point of puberty, you're preparing for your for your grief, right? Because it's now our agenda, it's heaven or hell, full stop, right? So why why in the, I I do wonder I do I mean in 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 in, in I don't know it is amusement or not or whatever, but I do wonder how in the world can adults or do adults why do, do adults have games in their phones? Is the most mindless. Nonsense, <laughs> right? There is so any Shatter's probably having a field day laughing and, and 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 like kind of like like you know boasting that he knew human beings are, are useless I and mean, human beings are like they're foolish. Any, right? So, I mean, not for adults, not for children. Right? All this any computer games, all these phone games, all they do is make your brain into mush, and you can't think, you can't read the world. You can't see what's going on around you. Then you become easy prey for the jinn. 
right? Um, this was going on in our mind. People have no more brains. They have no more brains right, in their in their heads. Which is why you have the most ridiculous things going on right now, and people are defending it. Right? Defending, have said I have no agenda. Defending, saying I am an animal. Defending, saying I am, you know, I will identify as however I want to identify. Complete brainlessness. There is no brain in there. No akal. Any, but how do human beings even reach this? And you have people supporting it, you know, and rallying behind it. Where in the world is this coming from? Um, because people are just having their brains turned into mush. They're using their minds not to think, not to not to educate themselves, not to not to nurture their their, their intellects. No, they're just using their minds to, to play any. <laughs> I don't know what the Google Play online. Um, I put the the candy crush or the fruit crush, whatever it is. Right? These are ridiculous, mindless games. Mindless. Okay, it's kind of lot. Right? So this is all you know to, to 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 bring attention to people. Stop it. Right? I feel I feel so yani, so when I say games, I'm talking about computer games. I'm not, I'm not talking about, about physical activity to keep your body healthy. Yani, Games are games. <laughs> sport is sport. Yeah, it's a different words, right? So games are games, right? So games are basically games. Yeah, it's games, right? So just just be very clear. Um, um, what I'm talking about, I'm talking about games, right? Keeping your body physically healthy is an amana. It's part of our religion. It's part of our religion anyway to keep your body healthy and to eat healthy and to be physically strong. As in the hadith of Islam, that a strong believer is better than a weak believer. A strong believer, physically strong, I right? believer, emotionally strong believer, mentally strong believer, spiritually strong believer is better than one who is weak. Right? So strengthen yourself. That is part of, that is part of ibadah to strengthen ourselves or to be healthy and strong. And tamam. Um uh so all right, so 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 just to you know bring attention to this, I right? so so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fahal Yamduruna. Right, so um, so the the, the hell, right? So it's a question, right? Um, you know, have are you waiting? Are, are you waiting around? Right, which means that at the point of this of the revelation of this verse, right now is the action. Right now, you're supposed to um, uh, uh, take the signs around you. Right, right now, you're supposed to read what's going on around you to know what is evil and what is good, so you don't fall into evil thinking. That it is, um, that it is good. Right. So I just mentioned one thing, which is which is basically computer games. Obviously evil. Obviously evil. Right. And I, and I wonder at, at adults who are fathers and mothers, Allah Alam, who have an Xbox. They have a I don't know what they call it. This stuff like what do people have now? I I mean I mean Subhanallah, I I how you know, still playing all these games. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You see how how obvious that it is evil. I hope people can see it. How obvious sitting there playing some mindless game, you know, on your PlayStation, on your PS, you know, um, on your on your phone, you know, on your I don't know, and then buying it for your children. Buying it for your children, feeding them the shah, feeding them the evil, giving it to them. You know, subhanAllah. Right? People, so people just need to wake up right, and see, do you want all of this on your scale or your judgment? And if you don't stop, right, it's going to be, you know, it's, it's basically um, a mindlessness that brings people into following the Dajjal without thinking at all, at all, at all. You know, subhanAllah. And it's really by education. Just by, it's really by education that people wake up from this heedlessness, this ghafla that they are in, this mindlessness that they are in, that is our zaman, which is the zaman of Uthai. In, in Tukta Hawla, you know, Habib Okay, Ali has actually identified, you know, time, you know, uh, time, I don't know what they call it, fatra, in the fatra, in the basically time spans, right? So we are in a zaman that is called Uthai which means uselessness. And this zaman was described by the Prophet وسلم, that the human beings that live in this zaman, they are useless human beings. <laughs> SubhanAllah. And Habib Akayani has, has identified that we are that zaman, that we are in the zaman of useless human beings. And we don't, and we don't argue with him. He's right. 
he is right. We are in a zaman of uselessness. Just go online and you and you and you will see so obviously how useless human beings have become. I, it's why you can, you can. It's not. It's not far fetched that the gel comes by and 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 sweeps everybody off their feet and pulls everybody onto his onto his caravan. So anyway, um, so for her young Durun, so are they waiting around? Are you waiting around? Right for you know, are you waiting around right for this? You know, and no matter what you try to argue about your games, compare it to Zikr, compare it to um, Quran. You see, you know, at the very least, which is a, which is a terrible thing. In fact, it replaces higher. You see that. So I'm responding to the, the comments here. Right, someone says that you play games more to to your aim of being focused. And using brain fog, right? Compare this to Zikr, compare this to a good class, right? Compare this to Quran, Tafsir, Hadith, right? You know, arranging things at items, something out games, blah, 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 blah. Compare all of these things to something higher. Compare it and tell me honestly which is better. Tell me honestly which would sharpen your brain. Um, um, much more, way much more. I would say a billion times more. So I'm going to compare it. <laughs> so I'm going to compare it. Right. Think about it. Think about it. And so anyone who argues that, oh, these games have, have benefit. Seriously? <laughs> Seriously? Do you want to compare this to, to Tafsir? Do you want to compare this to, to studying Hadith? Do you want to compare it to learning of Fiqh? Do you want to compare it to the self? You know, compare it to any of the books of Imam Ghazali, you know, Imam al haddad you know, any of his books. Can you understand that? Like, can you understand that? Right, that these games, you think they are sharpening your intellect. No, they are turning your brains into mush. And they are making you unable to think. Right? And they're destroying your iman. You know, subhanAllah, Allah knows. They are destroying your iman. They are making you lazy on your qiyamul making you lazy on your sunnah prayers, making you lazy on your Quran. It's all, it goes back to all these things. It does. So anyone who wants to argue, <laughs> you know, and defend your playing of games, to defend your watching of... So, so women, even though I know that game playing is... I don't know if it's more on the men's side, any, but... um. On the on the on the on the on the on the woman's side, maybe a lot of a lot of any anyway, I think watching videos, I guess. How do women do? I know men like football and any anyway, they have like their FIFA that they play and they have like the stuff that they, 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 they men I don't know, men tend to be more into and then women, I don't know what women do. <laughs> like women, women, women do, women do, I don't know. What do women do? <laughs> women, women are like watching like yeah, they, Series drama, right? Ah, yeah, dramas, right? Dramas, and it's what women do. This is even worse. This is even worse. You, you know, it's Muhammad, you know, um, they have statistics, they actually have statistics worldwide, right? Um, showing the relation between right, the increase in watching drama series, drama stories, and broken families and divorce rates. They actually have, you know, it's, um, they actually have um, studies going on worldwide. I, when when these women and you know are so obsessed with all of the things, you know, and then how it leads to a to, 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 to the breaking down of the family, you know, subhanallah. Um, uh, but I want to answer one thing here, right, about family board games. Right, here again, family board games. Um, yani, <laughs> right. So, um, family board games. Be I would say, be careful, right? Because why? Because. Like some of the board games, like there are negative, you say, intentions behind them. Okay. Right. Um uh and and in a sense that there is a, there, there can be an evil effect from it. So it depends. I would say depends. And just to give a call either from the fiqh, right, from the fiqh of Islam, that to spend your time playing chess. Okay, to spend it, and they're talking about chess. So they're not talking about like 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 other kinds of board games. They're talking about chess, right? To spend time playing chess, the scholars consider it um to be on the side of disliked, like right? something that's disliked. To spend time playing chess, right? So I would say as a family, if you want to rest, right, you want to have some family time, 
tell you know tell good stories and he tell the stories of the prophets tell the stories of this is what we do in my family and we tell stories like good stories any um but i say games like checkers chess whereby there's not um some you know influence in there like for example monopoly monopoly is a uh, and it is the tech right right Mon- Mon- monopoly is what a money hungry family game <laughs> so dunia uh, it's so incredibly dunia monopoly right i don't know why they said it but but any so if you go into the given games right there is an element of wasting of time that's there you want to have fun with your family go out go to the beach you know have fun have a picnic you know tell stories i know families that tell stories right? they, they, they collect stories that they, they hear in classes they share the stories today there was a funny story that how about actions class right you can you can share it with your family it's a very nice story to tell i would tell my kids you know the stories Right, it's all fun ways. I right? find fun, happy, healthy ways. Keep a cat. I mean, I'll keep cats. <laughs> right? And just play with this cat. When I was spending my time last night with my nephew, just playing with the two kittens in my house. And he, and he, and he made good intentions with her. There are many ways of recreation. And he, there are many ways of recreation. Right? Um, and human beings have human beings have have existed for generations without computer games, without board games, without any of this stuff. Right, and human beings survived, you know, and they had healthy family lives. Yeah, so so really, you know, mashallah, zikr and knowledge that it does so much for you, you know, subhanallah. But I would say good conversation, any good conversation, um, um, uh, with your family is beautiful. I, I, I enjoy I enjoy a good conversation. And today I had I had some time between my classes. I went to my sister's house, and I just had good, I just had good conversation with my sister. Just sat there and just conversed with her and my and my nephew and just had good conversation, you know, not not about people but about any you know I was studying about my degree and so on and so forth. This is talking about about good things and it's Subhanallah, right? So it um, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Nam. Right? So mashallah, in mashallah, you know, I really hope that people are uh, opening up their eyes, right? Do this. Okay. So anyway, I. <laughs> Went to that because of the first part of this verse. Do you, are you? Why are you waiting? Right? Why are you waiting before we make changes? Right? And again, it is not with an iron fist. Okay, it's something that will be emphasized over and over again by Habib Qur'anani that this entire change, because this change is going on in the world, you're trying to fall on to the, to the way of the Prophet Sallallahu you're not trying to implement something in your family or in your life, you know, iron fist. You're not trying to do that. You're trying to change mindsets. You're trying to go from within and change mindsets. That's what you're trying to do. Education. That, and let them make their decisions, right? And not an iron fist. Okay, so of course, with small children, and you don't bring it into the house. So you don't be the one to encourage it. Right, you don't bring into the house. You know, um, alhamdulillah, my my sibling, as I was, my mother never allowed music in our house. But nasheed, yes, and again, I mentioned before, we differentiate nasheeds and music. When we say music, we refer to all that is un-Islamic. Right, um, uh, my mother never allowed it in our house. She never allowed us to honor radio. She never allowed anything. You know, the true true my zaman was like you know all this you know, boy bands and whatever when I was primary school or secondary school. My friends were all into it. My mother never allowed any of it in my house and I, and, and I am grateful to her for doing that for us. She never allowed it. And she had her way. She would have not allowed TV as well in our house. You know, my mother, she never allowed us to go to the movies, ever. She would never give permission to go to the movies, ever, full stop, ever. You know, and I, and I am grateful for her for having that understanding, that basira. Right, that it is evil, you know, subhanallah, and, and it was a tarbiyah of us. Yeah. Right, so it is that, um, it is understanding, it is understanding. It's not about argumentation, it is not about forcing on down people's throats, it's not about, you know, um, uh, saying, you know, or uh, insulting people, you know, or saying bad words to people. It's not about any of these things, right, but it is about people to understand. Right, to understand that the best thing for them right now in this zaman, it is dhikr, it is Quran, it is even a pretty close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we need it, because we lack it, it um, you know, greatly. Right, subhanallah. Right, so um, 
Uh, right, so, so, uh, uh, so just to understand, eh, what you're trying to do is educate. Okay, you're trying to educate. You choose your life, right? you choose your way of life, right? People will choose their way of life, right? You know, um, it's gentleness and education. Understand these principles very well. Okay, that is the way of our Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You do, and, you, and as we go through the Tahawla, we go through the lives of Sahaba, we will find the Sahaba doing this. And the Sahaba did not shove things down people's throats. They did not force a way of life on people. They did not let me go around cursing and, and insulting people. They didn't do any of these things. Right? But they went the way of education. Because when someone internalizes something and truly believes in something, they will make the changes themselves. All right. So you choose your lives. You choose your any your path in life. You choose your path in life. All right. So you don't want to get involved with TV. You don't get involved with music. Choose it. It's your choice. It's a free will. Right? You choose it. You don't want to get involved. They want to do it. They do it. You don't want to do it. You don't do it. Full stop. Full stop. And it, you know, you hold and, and, you, and you keep your peace. And you hold your peace. You keep your peace. That is the way of who? That is the way of a prophet. Alayhi wa sallam. Right? So the word for you was, was Ruta and Ruta. Tamam, alhamdulillah. Um, so I'm just going to continue from the universe. Right? So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the ashrat, right? Um, the signs of the hour. And the signs will come to you all of a sudden. Right? So here in a, you know, um, uh, uh, so here in a, in a, uh, in, in this, in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, informs us that you're not trying to wait for the jail to appear. You're not trying to wait, you know, for things to change around you. You're not trying to wait for the Isa to appear. No, no. I, I, why are you waiting around? The, the, the ayat, you know, wakes us up. Why are you waiting around? Why are you hanging around? I right, wake up. Wake up to the matter. Make changes now. Right? Uh, Allah, Allah in, in, in his verse, the signs have already come. Right? The signs have already come. Right? Subhanallah. Right? Um, mashallah. Right? Let me just, uh, mashallah. So many comments here. Uh, I'm trying to balance between the sharah or the explanation and the comments because I know, as I mentioned, I want that people understand this as we go along, right? Um, and for people to uh, have uh, a why, right? The word why is a very beautiful word in Arabic, um, which means an, an encompassing. Yeah, and it's not just faham, it's a why. And, it, and, oh, and, it, and it, I don't know how to say it in English, right? but it's basically like, like a full comprehension, you know, of what's going on. Right? The word comprehension is different from understanding. Like it's a deeper, you know, encompassing. Like you get it. Like you just, you just get it. You know, Subhanallah. Um, you all make it easy for us. All right, Mashallah. All right. So, um, yeah. So again, again, if you have family who's going, who's, who's arguing with this, and so on, um, just you know, do your, do your, do your good deeds. Right? Do your engage in your good activities. Right? Do your good deeds. Engage in your good activities. Right, um, you know, live your life healthily because you have to. You have your soul to take care of, right? And if they want to engage in their activities, we do are that inshallah one day they wake up. You know, they wake up to the matter and they wake up to the to the to the fact that their grave is very close, right? And you know, he, subhanallah, you know, just to answer the question of those one was asking about childhood without TV, human beings have lived for generations without TV. By the way. <laughs> I mean, think about it. We are like from, from Nabi Adam, alayhi salam. Right? Nabi Adam to our to our zaman. To the okay, to the, to the to the time the TV was invented. How many years? And from the time the TV was invented to our time right now, how many years? Subhanallah. Right? Thousands of years before the TV was invented. What do human beings do? <laughs> right? Thousands of years before the internet was invented. What did human beings do? What do children do? Healthy things, <laughs> you know, subhanallah. Right? It's, it's only recent history, very, very recent history compared to the history of human beings, right? That we are that we find no other thing to do than to watch TV. Subhanallah, Allah created the entire world for us, <laughs> you know, subhanallah. I mean, so many things to do in my entire I, my, my, my family, alhamdulillah, the our households have no TV, 
So our children, you know, in, in my family's house in Singapore here in Tarim, they have no TV. They have no gadgets. They have no, they don't even know what to do with the phone. You know, Masha, one of one of our friends here, um, Anisa, like her child, when she picks up the phone, all she does is is put the phone to her ear. Because that's all she ever saw her mother do. Pick up the phone and put the phone to her ear. The baby, the baby does, does that. Because the baby has never seen anyone do anything else with a phone. <laughs> then you put it to the ear. They go, they're copying you. They're copying you. And it, so there are many, I can feel there are a billion things to do besides watching TV. You know, you can go cycling and play outside. You can do, you know, in, in amongst, you know, like the, the play of sand, go to the playground, any you know, more things. MashaAllah, um, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it um, uh, uh, easier for us, inshaAllah. Tamam. I'm just going to skip all of this. Eh? Right, so, uh, right. Again, um, the drama series, the drama series, right? Uh, even the Islamic, I don't know, I know the Islamic one, the 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 Turkish one, right? Okay, I never watched it, but it just scares me the number of episodes there are. <laughs> I don't know, they're like what hundreds and hundreds of episodes. I don't know, the, 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 the Turkish drama series, right? I've never watched it before. Um, I don't have time for to watch it, right? But I know people watch it. Allahu alam. I have no comment. I've not watched it. I, I don't really want to watch it because I don't have time to watch it. <laughs> right. So uh, Allahu Alam. Any I, I do, I do, I actually do wonder how do people find adults find time to watch series and drama? I actually I really honestly wonder. How do you find time to watch stuff? You know, subhanAllah. If you can find time to watch stuff, you are falling short on your ibadah. Honestly. I wish I had more time for my Quran. I honestly wish I had more time for my Quran. Any, I you know I'm studying, I'm teaching, I'm, I'm doing Quran. Like like to watch stuff. What are you doing? Where's your Quran? Like, where's your dhikr? Where's your aurat? Have you done your aurat? Have you done your aurat? Have you done your you know your salawat for the day? You know, are you doing three hundred? Are you doing a thousand? How many salawat are you are you doing? So I do wonder. I do wonder. Can we as Muslims? reset our button and find peace and tranquility and rest in saying salawats unto our Prophet Can we as Muslims do that? Can we do that as Muslims? As those who claim to love the Prophet Can we stop seeking the screen to rest and start seeking our Prophet because if anything, if anything, you know, on a day of judgment, that we will be so grateful that we did, is that one more slawat onto our Prophet because slawats are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regardless of how they are done. Okay. Think about it. I mean, you've all come to these classes. If you still need to watch series, videos, Yani, all this stuff to find rest. Where are you, the Prophet? Right? Where are you, the Prophet? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Can't you find rest with him? Let's say now, a Siddiq, whereby he comes out of his house and Rasulullah asks him, Why do you come out, Ya Abu Bakr? And he said, To see your face, Ya Rasulullah. And I was hungry, you know, I was hungry and I came out to see your face and it completed me, it, it filled me up. You know, subhanAllah, subhanAllah, where are we from that? Where are we from that? You know, and it's one of the he says, uh, Sina Abu Bakr, when he was asked, what are the things that you learn from this dunya? And he said, to see your face, Ya Rasulullah, to see your face. So where are we from that? Can we, can we start doing this? Can we start re, you say, can we start reprogramming, you know, our, our minds, cleanse ourselves of this addiction? It's an addiction. Right? Can we cleanse ourselves from this addiction of our gadgets? You know, Sayyidina say, say, Khalid bin Walid, right? he would look at the Quran and he would weep, he would cry, and he would say, Shaghna anka al jihad. Right? And he would say that to the Quran, O oh, Quran, jihad has visited us from you. And Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid, he's, he's, he's in jihad all the time. 
fighting the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time, this battle after the battle after the battle, and he will look at the mushaf, the Quran, and he will weep and he will say, Shagalna anka al jihad, Shagalna anka al jihad. Like, you know, jihad has, has, has occupied us from you. Jihad has occupied us from you. And we in our zaman, the word, you know, gadget in Arabic is jihaz. Uh, it sounds very similar to jihad. Uh, jihaz is the word uh, in Arabic for, for, for gadgets. Uh, and we are like looking at the, at the Mus'haf, the Quran, and we, and we are crying on a day of judgment. Can you imagine saying, Shagalna ankal jihaz, Shagalna ankal jihaz. Our gadgets have occupied us from you, O Quran. Our gadgets have occupied us from you, O Quran. SubhanAllah. So the Khalid Mu'alid is saying jihad, and we are saying jihaz. Like we are saying gadget, he's saying jihad, we are saying gadget. Like subhanallah. Like so think about it. You see, the thing of the tahawalat is that many things are obvious. They are actually really obvious. Good is obvious, evil is obvious. Al-halal al-bayyin wal haram al bayin Like what is good is clear. What is halal is clear. What is haram is clear. It is clear. Right. But we just you know, don't want to admit it. Or we just don't want to let go of it. We just, we're just so addicted. You know, I speak to myself as informers. And we're addicted to all these things. You know, and, and we know it's wrong. We know it's wrong. We know it's, it's what's blocking us from seeing our prophecy of Allah. We know what's blo is blocking us, you know, from, from, from tasting the sweetness in our prayer. We know it's blocking us from waking up in the night. We know it's, 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 the, it's, it's the blocks in our lives. So the blocks in our lives. We know it. The nafs is too strong, right? The nafs is too strong. The nafs just wants it. And it's may Allah and, and may Allah give us understanding. May Allah give us understanding. And um uh uh, uh to do it do as what pleases him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshallah, <laughs> she's still there. Any but I want to um so inshallah, I want to uh I, this verse, and this is the, the entire thing about tafsir. To unpackage a verse, it can really take you a long time, you know, mashallah. Um, but it is all guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I hope that this process gives you all any food for thought, right? And also encouragement in, um, to change, to make changes in your lives, inshallah. Um, and I apologize if I was hard or harsh on any methods. Um, but it's just really, you know, from when, when you learn all this knowledge and you hear the way the prophet speaks. Whenever I, whenever I go for my classes, my courses, and you hear the prophets, as I'm speaking to you directly, like you feel the urgency from his words. You're not hearing his voice. It's, 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 it's narrated to us. But you're hearing the, the urgency in his words. And you can't help but get take it from him. Right? That he's showing so much, you know, um, you know, urgency right, in the matter. Um, I said, inshallah, uh, I think this book is sold. Like this book, this book, the Howlet book, it's sold. It was sold in Singapore. I think it was something. Okay, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding, inshallah, um, and, and open our eyes and open our hearts. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us out those that we live around us. Like to steer away like, from what will destroy them and what will bring them away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what will intoxicate them, poison them, so toxins that and, and, and that 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 you know that will destroy the human being in the end of time and and uh, their addictions, their addictions. You know, subhanallah, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy you know, for our families. Always make dua for those who are around you yourselves, those who are around you. Teach your children the dua Allahumma arna al haqqa al haqqa wa rizq tiba wa arna al badla wa rizq nashtinaba Oh Allah, show us goodness as goodness, and show us a truth as truth, and allow us to follow it, and show us falsehood as falsehood, and allow us to stay away from it.
سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك واسلوه على سيدنا محمد بن عبد الله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ورحمه الله وبركاته الحمد لله اذا بشن ذا بوينت ذا بوينت يا بس بوينت السلام عليكم استاذه وعليكم السلام you know all over the world the practice of islam is being is being any attacked so it's not just in the west i won't say it's just in the west it's the whole world it's the whole world like right now you know the entire babi craze it's a big thing in indonesia right now so while you have people you know flocking to have it amar majlis in indonesia there are a whole lot of people it's a flock to barbi and it's it's, all, it's worldwide so any in a, the world <laughs> is a playing field of the jet but it's also the place where our professors are manifest you know there is good there's good is everywhere there is evil everywhere right so it's not just specifically the west or the east it's everywhere okay 